grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. I thank God for a tree. Before you freak out, I know I started last week's sermon exactly that way, but that's to remind you that we're in a sermon series about thanking God or thanks and giving this thing, this reconditioning of the mind that we as Christian people should, should quest after. So, see, we have new life, right? We, we, we have a new life in Christ Jesus, and as a result, God's desire for us is that we see everything in light of that new life. Last week, we started this sermon series by encouraging you, encouraging us to be thankful for the little things that we have a tendency to pass over and neglect and forget to thank God for. And I shared with you that I'm thankful for a tree and plastic chairs and a conversation that I got to have for an afternoon. And truly, this week, I thank God, I have been thanking God for that tree. And I, and I know some of you have, have come up to me as well this past week and said, wow, Pastor, I thank God for fill in the blank this week. And you're kind of focusing. And I thank God now for the fact that you're thanking God for those things. But today I want to change it up a little bit because not only do I thank God for trees and plastic chairs, Today, I thank God for fleas. Any, anybody with me? I, I thank God for fleas. Come on, see, show of hands. You're not thankful for fleas? I mean, we literally, a week ago, encouraged you to be thankful for little things. They don't get a lot littler than fleas. And yet here you sit, and you're not thankful for them. Okay, maybe for you it's not fleas. Maybe it's some other struggle or hardship or pain-inducing thing. Maybe it's something else in your life. Maybe it's, maybe it's challenges at work, or maybe it's a health problem. Maybe it's kind of a butting heads with another person. Maybe it's something that is causing you to struggle. The question is, do you thank God for that today? Because it's really easy to thank God for the good stuff, trees that give us shade. But today we want to go a little bit deeper and we want to ask the question, but are we also thankful for those things that might be sources of pain or anguish or challenge or struggle in our lives? Are we thankful for those things? Because brothers and sisters, we're called to be thankful to those things, for those things as well. We're called to actually give thanks for those things as well. As you just heard in our reading, we're actually called to give thanks in everything. Maybe you missed that. We're called to give thanks in everything. In World War II, two Dutch young ladies, two Christians who happened to be Dutch, decided that they did not like the injustice, the, the torment, the harassment and punishment of Jews in Europe, and so they decided to shelter Jewish people in their home. You know the result? You know what great reward they received for such a gracious act? They were put into a concentration camp where life was hard, and struggles abounded. Their names were Corey and Betsy Tenboom. Some of you have heard of their names before. These two sisters who loved the Lord and as a result sought to love others in his name. There's a pretty famous story about them. Maybe you've heard this, maybe you haven't. I want to share it with you now. It's about the two of them giving thanks in the midst of their hardship. Here's the story. In their barracks, Corey and Betsy Tenboom were shown a series of massive square platforms stacked three levels high and placed so close together that people had to walk single file to pass between them. Rancid straw 
was scattered over the platforms which served as communal beds for hundreds of women. Corey and Betsy found they could not sit upright on their own platform without hitting their heads on the deck above them. And so they lay completely back, flat, struggling against the nausea that swept over them from the reeking straw. Suddenly, Corey sat up, striking her head on the cross slats above. Something had bitten her leg. Fleas, she cried. Betsy, this place is forming, swarming with fleas. Descending from the platform and edging down a narrow aisle, that they made their way to a small patch of light. Here, here, and, and here, and another one, pointing out the flea bites. She wailed and said to her sister, Betsy, how can we live in such a place? Show us. Show us how, Betsy said matter-of-factly. It took Corey a moment to realize that her sister was actually praying. Corey, Betsy then said excitedly, he's given us the answer. Before we even asked, as he always does, he's given us the answer in the Bible this morning. Where, where was that from? Read that part again from this morning. Corey checked to make sure that no guards were nearby, then drew a small Bible from the pouch that she had managed to smuggle into the concentration camp. It was in 1 Thessalonians, she said. It was our reading this morning. Finding the passage in the feeble light, she said, here it is. Comfort the frightened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always. Pray constantly. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. That's it, Betsy interrupted. That's his answer. Give thanks in all circumstances. That's what we can do. We can start right now to thank God for every single thing about this barracks. Corey stared at her incredulously, looking around the foul, dank, dark room and said, such as what? Well, such as being assigned here together. Corey bit her lip. Yes, Lord Jesus, thanks for that. Such as what you're holding in your hands. Corey looked down at the Bible. Yes, Lord, thank you that there was no inspection when we entered here. Thank you for all the women here in this room who will meet you in these pages. Yes, agreed Betsy. Thank you for the very crowd here, for the very crowding conditions here. Thank you that we're packed so close that many others will hear your word. She looked at her sister expectantly and prodded, Corey, oh, 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 all right. Thank you, Lord, for the jammed, crammed, stuffed, packed, suffocating crowds. Thank you, Betsy continued on serenely, for fleas. That was too much for Corey. She cut in on her sister, Betsy, there's no way that God can make me grateful for a flea. Give thanks in all circumstances, Betsy corrected. It doesn't say in pleasant circumstances. Fleas are part of this place where God has put us. So they stood between the stacks of bunks and gave thanks for fleas, even though on that occasion, Corey was sure that her sister was wrong. As the weeks passed, Betsy's health weakened to the point that rather than needing to go out on work duty each day, she was permitted to remain in the barracks and knit socks together with other seriously ill parishioners, prisoners, excuse me. She was a lightning fast knitter and usually had her daily stock quota completed by noon. As a result, she had hours each day that she could spend moving from platform to platform, reading the Bible with fellow prisoners. She was able to do this undetected as the guards never seemed to venture far into the barracks. One evening when Corey arrived back at the barracks, Betsy's eyes were twinkling. You look extraordinarily pleased with yourself, her sister told her. Well, you know how we've never understood why we have such freedom in this big room, Betsy said, referring to the part of the barracks where the sleeping platforms were? Well, today I found out. This afternoon there was confusion in my knitting group about sock sizes, so we asked the supervisor to come in and settle it, but she wouldn't. She wouldn't step through the door, and neither would the guards. And you know why? Betsy could not the, keep the triumph from her voice as she exclaimed, because of the fleas. That's what the supervisor said. That place is crawling with fleas. There's no way I'm going in there. 
Corey Ten Boom's mind raced back to their first hours in the barracks, and she remembered Betsy bowing her head and thanking God for creatures that Corey could see no use for. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are called to give thanks in everything. I want that to sit on you for a minute. Yes, even for fleas. We're called to give thanks for everything. That's the beauty of the gospel. The beauty of the gospel is that Christ entered into our suffering. He he didn't float above it magically. He didn't just twinkle a little forgiveness stardust upon us. No, he became one with us, walked among us, and died for us. In fact, it's in his death, his bitter innocent sufferings and death that we see most clearly who God is. The fact that he is just and holy and the fact that he is phenomenally compassionate and loving towards us. It's in the suffering, it's in the hardship that we see who God is most clearly. When you become a Christian, life does not become easy. Some of us wish it did. Some of us pretend it does. I I hate to break it to you, it doesn't. The scriptures tell us in this world you will have troubles. But, But the hope is, the next part of the sentence, but fear not, for I have overcome the world. We're not supposed to be delivered from struggles. We're actually supposed to be thankful for them. And allow them to draw us closer to a God who loves us and demonstrates that most clearly in the struggle. Maybe for you it's not fleas. As we said earlier, maybe it's marital problems. Maybe it's business challenges. Maybe it's bratty kids. Maybe you, like the Alabama quarterback, are laying there with your entire career collapsed upon you because of a hip injury. I don't know what you're dealing with. But I know this, we're actually called to be thankful in the midst of it. Not for it, necessarily, but in the midst of it. Because we're called to be thankful for everything. See, that's what, that's what Christ did. Christ claimed our life on the cross and, and bound our life to his life and now desires for our life, empowered and equipped by the Holy Spirit to be different, that we're supposed to see everything differently because of the cross, including our struggles. I know when I said earlier that we should be thankful for the struggles, most, or for fleas, most of you went, huh? I know because I've been reminded recently about struggles. Uh, Yesterday, I got a text from Jill. I was in the Atlanta airport. I got a text from Jill about a truck that had now, a car that had driven into another house in Cape Girardeau, reminding me of our accident two years ago. Um, In case I neglected this detail, the house is two doors down from us. Right? We all have struggles. I I was in Houston yesterday morning and drove under an underpass and saw the tent villages of homeless people, entire cities of tents under the overpass in Houston. Those are hard things to be thankful for, aren't they? And yet maybe God is there with a person in the midst of them speaking his word and some other person or some person next to them or hearing God's word. Friends, we don't know how God is at work, but we know he is. And so we trust him even in the struggle because the struggles are part of what God can use to draw us closer to him. And so today I pray that you will not only be thankful for trees and plastic chairs, but that you'll actually also be thankful for, you know, hurting knees and fleas, challenges, struggles, pains, hardships, And that you'll trust even those moments to the Lord. And that you'll give thanks in the midst of them. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, your word reminds us in the book of Hebrews that we 
that we have a chief priest who understands our weakness and our struggles, the brokenness of creation. We know that's you, Jesus, and we thank God that you didn't stay far away but entered into our sufferings and our pain. In fact, God, your entire work of reconciling the word to yourself is all about brokenness and pain. We call it the cross. God, thank you for the cross that reminds us who we are, that there is redemption even in the challenges of life. Lord, may we see even those challenges and give thanks to you that you are good and faithful at all times and in all places to us. We love you, Jesus. But far more importantly, we know that you love us. We pray this in your name. And all God's people said, amen.